Hello and welcome back to Revenger and Sports and another edition of just basic maintenance, things you should know, things that will, will make you a better home mechanic or at least understand when you take your bike to a bike shop why the mechanic has recommended that you replace your chain or if they um, wish to spend the time, they can teach you how to lube your chain you could say, uh, that's not what George taught me, but <laughs> you decide what you do there. Anyway, this came about because yesterday there's another video where I'm um, doing an upgrade, a wheel upgrade to a bike with some head Arden wheels. And I was in the process of doing that. I cleaned the drivetrain, cleaned the cassette, crank set, and the chain itself. And it occurred to me that my customer probably has never really been told um, how to lube her chain and where to lube the chain. So that's kind of where we're at today because I did this for her yesterday. And I thought, you know what, do another video. I've done a video about this before, but I was holding it, with, holding the camera with one hand and, and today I've got um, Jess helping me out. So. Um, I can, I can do things with my hands and it would probably make more sense. So one of the things that I wish to talk about is that when someone says a chain is worn and it needs to get replaced or the chain is stretched, the, the two most common tools you're going to see is like this guy here and if you want to look at how this thing is used, basically a new chain would be from 0.25 to 5 and anything above 0.75 should be replaced. And that number is seen in this window here, right? So as you're doing your measurement, whatever you see in this window is what you uh, would be required to do. So let's use this piece of chain here as an example you take a pin pop it in one of the links take the other pin put it into the other link okay actually let me turn this around so you can actually see it and then once you've put a link or I should say a pin in each one of these links you push on this okay and then whatever you see in that window is what you're supposed to do I see a bunch of shade <laughs> all right so I'm trying to move away <laughs> because the phone is actually creating the shade, but that's okay. Anyway, the point is that's how you measure a chain or you use this guy, right? Okay. But what I want to do is show you where you're supposed to lube your chain and why immersive waxing has become so popular uh, with the people that really, really want to lube their chain properly, okay? So this is just a basic, um, I'm just going to break this chain apart, right? So this is a nice long handle, so you get a lot of leverage. Okay, we'll pull that out. Of course it's going to get stuck, right? These things are littered all over my shop floor. Okay, so there's the pin. Now, pin and these are the links. Now I want to show you, and the nomenclature, we don't need to obsess about how perfectly I'm going to call these things, but this is an outer plate. This is an inner plate, so you got outer, inner, outer, inner, right? Okay, so now we just took this pin out and we're going to pull that apart, okay? Now you can easily see these two are outer plates and this one and this one are inner plates. 
Now the next step of this breakdown is to push out this roller. There we go. Okay. So now what you're going to see is this roller right here. I'm going to pull out. And you can see this shoulder here where this roller sits on top. So all the wearing and um, the measurements that are being taken is this shoulder here, this roller, the inner surface of that, that's where all the wear is happening. And as that wear uh, becomes to a certain amount, then you have to replace the chain. So let's just kind of put this kind of together, right? Because the pin's going to go in there like that, okay? So the only place you really need lube when you use any type of lube is inside here and inside here because that's where all of the articulation of the chain is happening, right? So the plates don't get longer. The chain doesn't stretch because the plates got longer, whether they be the outer plate or the inner plate. They don't get longer. It's just inside here is where all the wear is happening. Inside this shoulder and the interface to this roller. So that's why... That's why it's really important to get lube down into that section and not on the plates because the plates don't really, I mean, they don't really wear, right? And that's why um, immersive chain wax has become really, really popular. So I still need to do a video about this. I haven't had time. Um, I've had to do a lot of other things to keep the shop running and that that's just a I think initially it's a little time consuming but then after that it's fine but um, but immersive chain wax if you believe all the studies it's going to extend the life of your chain by a lot and if and by default if it extend, extends the life of your chain then it extends the life of your chain rings and your cassettes if you're running high-end equipment like Dura-A stuff, that gets really costly if you have to replace chain rings and replace cassettes. $300 plus for, for a cassette. I mean, it's just ridiculous, right? But um, a little bit of elbow grease and, and maybe you can save um, your... I mean, I think I heard like 10,000 miles on a chain, which for me, 10,000 miles... That would be probably, you know, four or five chains, right? At, at about 2,500 miles per chain, 3,000 miles per chain. So, yeah, that would be a really good cost savings when everything's just getting more expensive, right? Okay, so that is how a chain, what a chain looks like when it's broken down. Uh, please leave a comment down below. I want to make sure I've um, been able to demystify what people mean by your chain has stretched or your chain is worn. And if you have any questions or comments or if I could reshoot this video in a way to, um, to uh, illustrate those points better, please let me know. And, you know, if you've got other topics you want me to cover, please let me know as well. Leave well, that in the comments down below. I have below. a question, George. Oh, yes because I'm sitting here filming this and all these tiny little things on the screen in front of me. Yep. And so what's the best way to get the lube into that teeny tiny little space? Yeah, I know, right? That's the tough part. So aren't you going to show us or is that going to be a separate video? <laughs> well, it could be a separate video. I didn't want this. Um... Yeah. So <laughs> great question. And, you know, on a, on a personal level, I use squirt as a as a chain lube yeah i've been using that too for a couple years one of my yeah. friends who's an auto mechanic recommended it to me yeah um i mean i think any lube is a good lube 
if you use it and you keep your drivetrain clean. So having said that, if you use it and if you keep your drivetrain clean, a, a wax-based lube is an easier lube to live with in my opinion because when you put the lube in, you don't have to uh, wipe off the excess. That's number one. Number two, it does penetrate in into these little tiny little areas where it should where it's going to do the most good do you have to like let it soak overnight someone told me that once you know just to give it time because it's so slow and thick it takes a little while till it can work its way down in there yes that's a good question because it is a liquid and you want it to solidify so however long that takes in your ambient um, temperature where you're at I would strongly suggest you got a big ride on Saturday you do it Friday right don't do it well there was another study where they put the lube on right away and went out riding but the stuff's just gonna fly off so you really want it to dry so um, I've never done this but I guess people have heated up the lube this kind of lube and then put their chain in it i don't know what results they got out of that but if you put the lube on the chain let it kind of find its way and seep itself seep its way into these small little parts that i showed you that might be better and you um, said you don't have to wipe off the excess because i i always like take a rag and I just like go on the outside edges of each side of the chain just because I think there's goop that's going to start collecting dirt and stuff. I don't need to do that. Got to wait till it dries. Most of it's going to flake off anyway. But yes. Oh, um, oh and actually, I think you brought up another that's point. That's awesome. Yeah. I just... Well, Saved gonna... yourself some more time, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put the lube on. Should be good for about two to 300 miles or, you know, like let's say... 300 to 500 K, I guess. Um, you know, if you just have a microfiber cloth, when you've done your ride, come home and just kind of wipe out, wipe the, the plates, the outer and inner plates, just wipe that off. That usually keeps your chain clean for hundreds of miles before you have to degrease. Yeah, I have had, uh, again, my other mechanic friend told me yeah. that. He said after every ride, just real quick, just yeah. take like 30 seconds and wipe, wipe, wipe. Yeah, so if you if you swing around this way, I mean, I've got hundreds upon hundreds of miles on this chain. Now, you could say, oh, well, that's dirty. Well, yeah, it was raining last Saturday and it's raining again today. Uh, and it rained on my Tuesday ride, right? But if I wanted to clean this chain, then all I'd have to do is just kind of run this rag over it. Actually, the pedal's going to hit that display stand. So let's, let's see if we can... But if I just do this, I don't know if the lighting is good enough for you, but uh, let's see if we can turn a little bit this way. If I just do this, now I understand my bikes are always in a stand when I'm showing you folks something, but if I just rub my finger on it or rub the rag on it, you could see immediately how it gets clean. And so what you're trying to do is just try to not shade it with the, with the camera and just try to use the, the lighting of the shop, light, the shop lighting. But I mean, it just comes up super clean very easily. All you have to do is just rub it just a little bit and it's going to come clean so there's not going to be a lot of excess on on here but if we wanted to and you know i haven't cleaned my chain with a degreaser of any type in a long time because it's just not necessary um but yeah if i wanted to clean this i mean my cassette it's just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles through rain, through stuff, and it's just, it's just, it's clean. Now, it can be cleaner with immersive wax. I get it. And that's what the proponents of immersive wax will say. But if we go back to just the application, which I think was your initial question, apply it, let it dry, and then go ride. Um, 
But I would say, I wouldn't give it a time frame of 12 hours, 24 hours, but just the day before you're going to go on something really epic or it's been, you know, two to three weeks since the last time you rode. I'm sorry, since the last time you applied squirt, then you do it. It's always going to depend on your mileage, your weather conditions, all that kind of stuff. As I said, um, I mean, I've ridden through three rainy days so far on this chain. I haven't cleaned it through those three rainy days. So, yeah, it, it, it needs some cleaning. But, you know, today's, um, what's today? Is today Wednesday or Thursday? I've lost track. <laughs> Oh my I think God. it's Wednesday. Okay. All right. Wednesday. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I've got two more days to get this bike prepped for a 250 kilometer, I'm sorry, 250 mile, 400 kilometer event on Saturday. So, you know, the bike is, as they say, you know, come as you are. That's the way the bike is right now. But it's very easy to clean a drivetrain that is on a wax based lube. You decide what what your favorite lube is, and if it works for you, rock and roll or white lightning or uh, tri-flow, if that lube works for you and you can keep your drivetrain clean and um, and avoid dirt buildup, sand buildup, keep using that lube. It works for you. No reason to switch. But if you're looking for something else to penetrate into those rollers and pins and bushings and all that stuff, you know, the way to go these days is, is with a, an immersive wax, hot wax method. Okay, that's all for today. If you like this type of um, video, please let me know and I'll create more content of this nature. Okay, please like and subscribe. We'll see you up the road.